Okay, welcome back to uh, Process Control and Dynamics. I'm going to go through a lab experiment. Uh, first of all, we're going to take this out of the box. Uh, you'll have to construct this. Some of you will have to construct this uh, little Arduino uh, control device. Uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and just set this down on my desk and then plug in the uh, U to the USB port here on my computer. You'll need at least uh, two USB ports because we're also going to take the thumb drive and run a Linux distribution off of it. So I'm going to plug this into the bottom port and then go ahead and plug this into the outlet jack. That's the power supply for the temperature control uh, Arduino board here. And okay, so what I'm going to do now is go ahead and plug in the Linux distribution. This will boot Linux directly off the thumb drive. So what you need to do is go ahead and plug it in. And once it's plugged in, then go ahead and turn on your computer or restart your computer. When the message comes up, this will depend on the type of computer that you have. On my message, it says uh, press this blue Think Vantage button. Some of you, it's going to be F2 or F10 to enter into the BIOS. And uh, then I'm going to go ahead and boot off of the Lexar USB flash drive. Click Enter, and it's going to start booting up the uh, the Linux. Okay, so. I've got uh, you know, Linux coming online, a couple messages as it starts to boot up, and and then it's going to uh, show the Ubuntu. This is Ubuntu Linux, and it takes a little while. You got to click Try Ubuntu. Do not click Install Ubuntu uh, because that's going to install over your current uh, distribution. You can go ahead and click Try Ubuntu, and then it'll just run everything off that thumb drive. It will not affect your hard drive. Okay, so once you click uh, Try Ubuntu, uh, then it'll go ahead and boot up Linux um, from your thumb drive. It'll take about five minutes to boot up uh, on this computer, and then you'll see a couple folders at the top. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and first of all go to the first folder, uh, which is the Arduino folder, and uh, go ahead and click on Arduino and click Run. Do not click Run in Terminal, but Run instead. And it's going to bring up uh, something that will allow you to flash this program down to the Arduino board, the, uh, the program that needs to run on the Arduino. Okay, so go ahead and select this, and then uh, go ahead and click uh, OK, and it will open it, and then go ahead and upload that to the device that's plugged into through the USB port. Okay, so that'll say uh, that it's uh, it was done successfully. Go ahead and close that out. You'll only need to do this once to do it for Java or for Python if you switch between the two. Okay, and then um, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and open up the second folder, which is processing, and then click Run on the processing, and that'll bring up the program that we're going to run. So we flash some contents to the device, and now we're going to run a program here on the computer on the USB drive. And, and go ahead and select this third folder and select PID controller and go into that folder and select the uh, PID controller then and click OK. Okay, and once that, uh, this will bring up a folder. You won't need to modify this source code. Uh, you'll just need to run it. Okay, go ahead and click the, the Run button at the top and then that will bring up an interface. Now the interface, the top of the interface is the PID input or set point uh, signal. Now this is the temperature that's being measured and the bottom is the voltage that's sent to the device. Now I have a couple different uh, uh, buttons on the left here as well. Now that's toggle between manual and automatic. I can also input a set point here. So it's in automatic right now. I'm going to type in a set point and then I need to click send to Arduino. Do not select enter you need to select send to Arduino and then you'll see the set point change. That's the desired uh, temperature value that we're trying to drive it to. Now you can see there the blue line it drove the voltage up because it wants to increase the temperature and you'll see the temperature increase. I'm going to fast forward it just a little bit, make it go just a little bit faster so we don't spend uh, all day here, uh, but it will take a few minutes to rise up to that set point and you can see it's increasing because the voltage the voltage is at 255 or its maximum value. Okay, so I had my set point set there. Now I'm going to change the set point. Um, I'm going to change it back down to zero, and you can see the voltage is going to drop off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle it to manual, and then I'm going to input a voltage instead of having the controller do that for me. So I'm going to do 150 and then send that to Arduino. And then you'll see the blue line, the voltage that's on the bottom, that went to 150 out of 255. 
Okay, so what we're going to see, I'm going to actually blow on this uh, temperature probe a little bit just to get it to drop in temperature a little bit faster. And um, you don't want to do that, by the way, blow on it when you're take, doing these uh, step response experiments. You want to just um, not have those disturbances. Okay, so now I'm going to change uh, the voltage just a little bit more and just observe some of these fluctuations. Okay, so what it's doing is it's recording a CSV file on your thumb drive as this is uh, recording, and then we'll take that data later and be able to take it back and, and do some of our modeling. So we need to perturb it. We need to move it up and down so that we get uh, diverse data here for our fitting. Okay, so we need to do some step responses or doublet tests or other types of inputs on our voltage and you want to do that in manual mode for the identification for later on you'll put it in automatic to test your controller so for the the step responses you want to do it in in manual and step that good and close it out now one important thing is is once you've closed it um, now you can go and access that that um, PID output file okay and then what you can do is go ahead and copy that and then you can copy it to your local hard disk Okay, so I'm going to, uh, this is my Windows device. Even though I'm in Linux, I can still access my desktop on my Windows uh, computer or uh, Mac, if you have Mac. I'm going to go ahead and paste this right on my desktop. Okay, so that's on my Windows computer now from, I copied it from my Linux. And the last thing you want to do is, is go ahead and shut down. There's a little icon in the upper right. Go ahead and select that and then select shut down. Okay, so go ahead and select shut down. And then when it asks you, go ahead and, and uh, you'll see a little dialog box appear um, right down below. And go ahead and click uh, shut down. Now it's very, very important at this point that you do not remove the thumb drive until the computer has finished shutting down. So you want to let it run until it is uh, completely finished shutting down. And then you can remove the thumb drive. If you remove it now, then it will corrupt the thumb drive and you'll have to get that reloaded. Okay, so now I'm back on Windows. I went ahead and rebooted into Windows and you can see the CSV file that I'd saved to the desktop. There's time in milliseconds. There's my temperature that it recorded and then also my voltage that I sent to the device to get the temperature to change. And that's in millivolts. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is uh, go ahead and just open this up with Excel just to uh, look at the CSV file. And you can see those columns there, milliseconds, temperature, and voltage. I don't need the set point, the KP, KI, or KD. We'll need those later. Okay, so I'm just going to open this up as my data file. Then I also have a fit model, um, the XLS file. You can use this or uh, control station to fit your first order, uh, first order model. So I'm going to copy time out of this. That's in milliseconds. I'm going to copy it to the left of the time column and then just make time, that time divided by a thousand, just so it's in seconds instead of milliseconds. And then go ahead and uh, copy that down. And then I'm also going to take, um, okay, so what I'm going to do is, is scroll up and then also go over to the voltage. That's going to be my input. Okay, so I'm going to grab my input um, and then copy that in. Now, now this data file that I'm working with, it, it uh, actually doesn't contain real data. I'm just showing how to access that off. You're going to have real data from your step response um, and be able to paste that into yours. Now paste the temperature into measured and then copy the model on down and then you'll see that uh, it has some model predicted values and then also your absolute error and your squared error as well. Go ahead and copy those down as well to, to sum up your errors. Okay, so now I have my gain and my time constant, and I'm going to adjust those to try to fit uh, the sum of squared errors or sum of absolute errors. Okay, and once you do that, you have your model, and uh, that is a first order uh, plus dead time model. Now, we're not fitting the dead time there. You can optimize this with solver. So go ahead and set your objective to a minimum. You don't want to maximize, you want to minimize, and then adjust your gain and your time constant to minimize either the sum of squared errors or the sum of absolute errors. And once you click solve, you'll have your model and you will be able to use that to design your controller. So uh, that is the end of this tutorial. Um, visit APMonitor.com for more information.